Ronald Dion DeSantis, the 46th governor of the state of Florida, will announce his candidacy for the Republican nomination for the office of President of the United States of America next week. Ron DeSantis will never be the president for two main reasons. First, he wore these boots in public in front of other Americans, and there's photographs. And the second reason, and we've discussed this before on this platform, he eats chocolate pudding with his fingers. It's disgusting. But there's also a third reason, and it's foundational. His campaign makes no sense whatsoever. David Axelrod, who was the chief strategist for Barack Obama's two winning presidential elections, and a very smart man, pointed this out in a tweet. Let's call it the DeSantis paradox. According to David Axelrod, one of the paradoxical challenges for Governor Ron DeSantis as he enters the race is that he talks about Trump's, quote, culture of losing, end quote, but refuses to say Trump lost. Be interesting to see how he navigates that. Now, let's listen to the rationale for Ron DeSantis's presidential candidacy. Quote, you have basically three people at this point that are credible in this whole thing, end quote. Mr. DeSantis told donors on the call, organized by the super PAC supporting him, never back down. Biden, Trump, and me. I think of those three, two have a chance to get elected president, Biden and me, based on all the data in the swing states, which is not great for the former president and probably insurmountable because people aren't going to change their view of him. Well, Here's the thing about Ron DeSantis. People have certainly changed their view of him. If you look at his polling numbers in December, he was handily beating Donald Trump. But just a few short months later, he has collapsed. Now, presidential politics is a brutal business. Ron DeSantis doesn't understand this yet, but he'll figure it out. And so will his wife, Casey, who is his de facto campaign manager. You see, it's like this. Ron DeSantis is the equivalent of a commercial airline pilot. Now he's going to try to be an astronaut. But these two things have literally nothing to do with one another. They're completely unrelated. So Ron DeSantis is off into the presidential race. Ron DeSantis is saying that he can win because Trump will lose. But Ron DeSantis won't say that Trump lost or that Trump is responsible for Republican losses in 2018, 2020, in 2022. In fact, Ron DeSantis, if you think about it this way, is afraid to say out loud, and certainly in front of Donald Trump, what his actual candidacy is about. It's pathetic. Now, who is Ron DeSantis? Ron DeSantis is the man that Donald Trump called Meatball, the cherubic governor of Florida, a man who is in a tangle with the biggest jobs provider, the biggest economic engine in his state, the Walt Disney Company. Ron DeSantis is being sued by Walt Disney now. He's being sued because he's being called out for his revenge campaign against the largest employer of the state. What Ron DeSantis has done with his book banning campaigns, with his revenge campaign against Disney, and over and over and over again, is he has used the power of the state of Florida to punish people that disagree with him. Now, should Ron DeSantis capture the presidency, he will have power by orders of magnitude that are greater than what he possesses in the state of Florida. And he will abuse it as he has abused it in the state of Florida. Now, Bob Iger, is one of the foremost CEOs in the United States, a man whose tenure at Walt Disney has been profoundly successful. And in an era where trust has collapsed in America's business leadership, Bob Iger is one of the rare examples who has more than delivered. He has a reputation for probity and integrity. Now, Bob Iger hasn't taken Ron DeSantis's attacks laying down. He hasn't been impotent. 
He hasn't been flaccid. And so here are the consequences for Ron DeSantis of his manifest failures in the state of Florida. Yesterday, the state of Florida pulled the plug on a $1 billion development in the state that would have employed 2,000 people at an average salary of $120,000 a year. Poof, gone because of Ron DeSantis. Now, Florida has an additional $17 billion of investment planned for the state of Florida. Every dollar of it on the chopping block because of Ron DeSantis's idiocy. It's a perfect example of how the buffoonery hurts real people, their opportunities, their prosperity, the chance for communities to thrive, to grow, and become centers where people can build community and pursue happiness. Ron DeSantis's campaign for the presidency will be a spectacular failure. It will be enjoyable watching it happen. But the person he will lose to, the likely winner of the Republican nomination, is not something to be celebrated because Donald Trump's coming ascension back into position to become president of the United States is a harbinger of tragedy, of chaos, of death, of the end of democracy. He is among the most profound threats the country has ever faced. It's too bad that Ron DeSantis lacks the character, the integrity, the judgment, and the wherewithal to beat him along with every other candidate in the Republican primary field thus far. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Also, for more content just like this, please consider joining our warning premium community. You can find out more in the description below. Among the greatest pieces of evidence in America about the corruption of American media is that these words are a household word. Marjorie Taylor Greene. How is it that America's greatest imbecile in Congress is a household name? Well, it's because of the American media. If you are studious, if you are diligent, if you are hardworking in the United States Congress, you are likely to be anonymous. At any rate, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who runs amok in the McCarthy Republican MAGA Congress, filed impeachment papers against President Biden and half of his cabinet. At the same time, Marjorie Taylor Greene is a leading proponent that the United States default on its debt and plunge the world into economic chaos in just a few short weeks from now. Let's watch Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about her efforts to impeach the president. It is with the highest amount of solemnity that I announce my intention to introduce articles of impeachment today on the head of this America at Last executive branch that has been working since January 20th, 2021 to systematically destroy this country. The President of the United States, Joseph Robinette Biden. Joe Biden has deliberately compromised our national security by refusing to enforce immigration laws and secure our border allowed approximately 6 million illegals from over 170 countries to invade our country, deprive Border Patrol of the necessary resources and policies sufficient to protect our country. And his administration has willfully refused to maintain operational control as required by the law. Next, Marjorie Taylor Greene apparently took exception to being called a white supremacist which she is. She is a white supremacist. How do we know that Marjorie Taylor Greene is a white supremacist? We know, incontrovertibly, through her words, through her beliefs. She is a Christian nationalist. She has said so over and over again. She is hostile to American democracy. She is hostile to American pluralism. She is a political extremist of the first and highest order. Now, she's also an imbecile. She's also completely deluded. She's a freak show. But that doesn't mean that she's not dangerous. 
Let's look at this remarkable exchange. I will tell you what's on video is Jamal Bowman shouting at the top of his lungs, cursing, calling me a horrible, calling me a white supremacist, which I take great offense to. That is like calling a person of color the N-word, which should never happen. Calling me a white supremacist is equal to that, and that is wrong. This person is in the United States Congress, and it raises a question. Congressional district has 800,000 constituents. And I'd like to say this to the good people of Georgia who sent Marjorie Taylor Greene to the Congress. You people in our great country are not pulling your weight. Do better. You have sent from amongst you the worst of you. And she's hurting all of us. Maybe think about defeating her in the next election. Speaking of the next election, the next president, of course, will have the ability to appoint Supreme Court justices. The Supreme Court has collapsed, like many other institutions in the eyes of the American people. The Supreme Court now has the lowest approval level on the issue of trust and legitimacy that it's held in 50 years. This is the fault of many factors, but chief among them are Clarence Thomas and the corruption of Clarence Thomas, and not to mention the extremism of Samuel Alito, the anger of Brett Kavanaugh, and the illegitimate processes in the eyes of the American people that put them on the court for lifetime appointments. Now, the simple fact of the matter is, is America needs to have a functioning Supreme Court. It needs to have trust in the Supreme Court. It needs to have faith in the Supreme Court. And it does not. And that failure rests squarely on the shoulders of the man whose job for a lifetime, should he assume it, which he did, to maintain the integrity of the court. That's the Chief Justice's job. That's John Roberts' jobs. And he's not doing a very good one. All across America, the American people have lost faith faith in business, faith in government, faith in technology companies, faith in pharmaceutical companies. They do not believe the people at the top are looking out for them. And this crisis of faith, belief, and trust has allowed for the rise of an American demagogue, someone who hates democracy, our ideas and ideals, who is selling the most toxic delusion there is, that he, he alone, can fix what's broken. The only price we'll pay for that is the loss of our freedom. Too high a price to pay.